वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट आर न्यू चैप्टर दैट इज चैप्टर नंबर थर्टीन मोशन एंड टाइम नाउ इन दिस चैप्टर मोशन एंड टाइम वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ मोशन द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ मोशन एंड ऑल्सो हाउ वॉट इज टाइम हाउ टाइम इज मेजर्ड ओके सम सम्स विच आर बेस्ड ऑन डिस्टेंस स्पीड एंड टाइम एक्सेट्रा नाउ वी विल स्टार्ट विथ मोशन एंड टाइम सो लेट एस सी वॉट इज एक्चुअली मोशन वॉट इज मोशन Now motion. When do we say any object is in motion? When the object is in motion, that means the object's position will change with respect to time as well as its surrounding. That means if suppose any person is standing here at suppose ten a.m. Okay. Now after suppose twenty minutes. Okay. That means at ten twenty a.m. the person will be standing somewhere else okay that means motion when a object is said to be motion when that object changes its position changes its position with respect to time and surrounding okay so three things you should remember when any object changes its position with respect to with respect to two things first is time and second is surrounding okay <clears throat> that means whenever any object is in motion that particular object changes its position with respect to time and its surrounding okay so it is called motion what do you understand by the concept rest when do we say any object is at rest we say in motion but at rest when do we say any object is at rest when the position of the object does not change with time and its surrounding then that particular object is said to be at rest okay so the position of the object does not change with respect to time and surrounding we say that object is at rest okay so any object flying a uh, bird flying so the bird is in motion that means the position of the bird changes according to or with respect to time and surrounding or if we say any suppose tree or a house is at rest or suppose we are sitting and studying something we say we are at rest that means the position of the object does not change with its surrounding as well as with the time okay that is a concept of motion and rest now this motion and rest they are relative to each other okay so rest and motion they are relative to each other what do you mean by relative so we can say motion and rest they are relative to each other relative means with respect to each other that means they are related to each other when it comes with respect to each other we say they are relative terms okay that means they are related with each other so whenever we say any object is in motion that particular object can also be at rest if any object is in motion that particular object can also be at rest at the same time that is called they are relative to each other that means they are related with respect to each other that means when i am moving suppose i am running so i am running i am in motion with respect to the trees which are present there so with respect to the tree or related to the trees i am in motion but and when i am at rest suppose i am sitting so i am at rest because with respect to the objects around me i am at rest so that is why these terms are called relative terms that means any object is in motion or at rest with respect to so many factors with respect to the time with respect to the objects near it with respect to the surrounding but remember sometimes the object that is in motion can also be at rest okay for example suppose in a train okay suppose a train is moving in a particular direction and we are sitting inside that compartment okay so with respect to each other we are at rest because in a moving train suppose we are sitting close to each other so with respect to the people sitting be beside or behind us we are at rest okay but with respect 
to time and the surrounding that means the locality the train or the object is in motion that means this person is both at rest and in motion with respect to the person sitting just beside him so he is at rest but when the person is compared with a moving train then he is said to be in motion because along with the train the person is also moving so the object which is in motion can also be at rest okay or we can also say sometimes when objects are at rest can also be in motion for example see we are sitting here now in re with respect to our surrounding we are at rest but with respect to the rotation of the earth or revolution of the earth we are in motion so we are both at rest and in motion okay because it is with respect to the object with respect to this surrounding i am at rest but with respect to the planets our earth is moving so we are in motion that is why it is said these are relative terms that means they are related to each other okay now let us see what are the different types of motion let us see what are the different types of motion now two very important types are there a slow motion and a fast motion okay a slow motion means when suppose we are walking slowly we are covering less distance in the required time but our friend suppose is covering more distance with respect to that same time so he is faster than us isn't it so suppose we are covering one one kilometer in suppose 10 minutes okay but this is a suppose a but b is suppose covering 1 kilometer in suppose 8 minutes okay less time then b is said to be faster than a because he is covering the same distance but in less time so b is faster okay with in comparison to a so motions can be slow as well as fast this slow and fast types of motion they depend on two things that is the distance and the time okay so distance and time is equal to speed all of you know distance divided by time is equal to speed so when we say we are having a slow motion or we are having a fast motion that means speed it determines our speed so speed depends on two things what are they distance and time so please remember speed depends on two factors that is distance and time so the rate at which we are moving whether it is slow motion or fast motion it depends on two factors that is the distance covered by the object and the time taken to cover that particular distance by the object so please remember speed is equal to so speed is equal to distance by time okay again distance is equal to speed into time okay distance is equal to speed into time and if t comes here s goes there so t is equal to distance divided by speed okay so these are some of the very common you can say equations that we should know when we are studying about motion and time now let us see our next topic that is how to measure time okay what are the ways by which ancient people they used to measure time now time can be time is an important factor okay so motion and time so motion you know when an object changes its position with respect to time and surrounding it is said to be motion rest also you know now let us see what are the measurements by the help of which we can measure time okay now there are some stages in which ancient people used to uh, estimate time okay how they used to measure or estimate time now in ancient times see they used to follow certain events okay or some natural phenomena phenomena so phenomena is plural phenomenon is singular okay phenomenon means singular so they used to observe certain events or some natural phenomena which were periodic in nature see they are repeated at regular intervals for example the sunrise the sunset for example 
the rotation of the earth or revolution of the earth that means the new moon or the full moon sometimes okay or the seasonal changes like after summer comes monsoon so summer monsoon then comes autumn then comes winter so these are periodic changes so they used to estimate time by the help of events which were natural okay so they were periodic in nature now after that the disadvantage of this is that such kind of measurement changes so it varies okay so changes or varies so we cannot depend on such kind of measurement because there is a change or there is a variation in such kind of measurement that is why this is not the correct way to measure time okay now after that what happened during the medieval period that means some between in between that means after ancient but before modern certain other types of devices were invented okay like the sun dial like the sand dial okay like that is also called the hourglass like the water dial or water clock okay so in this way time was measured in sun dial what happened in the sun dial there is a you can say object okay circular object in which measurements are there and there is a shape like this in between now the this shape cast a shadow okay so by measuring the length of this shadow whichever direction the sun moves so the sun cast a shadow by estimating the length of the shadow the measurement was done so that is called sun dial in case of sandstone or hourglass what happens you know there is a narrow like this end and sand is kept here okay so as long as sand is present it will slowly come and get collected here so in this way the full sand will be collected in a certain time again we can change it so it can be interchanged in this way okay that is the sand or hour glass and in water clock also by the help of water there were certain systems by the help of which measurement was estimated okay and after that came the pendulum system pendulum system means the oscillation system oscillation means when the movement suppose there is a bob here so the movement of this bob iron rod is sometimes to the left sometimes to the right so it moves in two and fro direction okay two and fro direction that is called oscillation so if you see the diagram like this so it moves like this that is called a mean position this is the mean this is the zero okay this side is plus and this side is minus so it moves up and down that means vibrations are produced these are called oscillations okay so this modern clocks and modern watches they also use oscillations and springs and different types of crystals in order to estimate time which is very very accurate okay so please go through the book try to find out important uh, terms like huygens he discovered pendulum okay that means this pendulum the movement of the bob and how uh, such kind of devices were used by humans to measure time okay in our next video we will study about how to measure time and uh, what are the different ways by which time can be estimated by us okay i will upload the summary please write it and go through your books if you have any queries you can call me or let me know thank you so much for watching this video